Angeblich bin ich live. Sag mal, wenn es bei dir ankommt. Hello, Leute. <lacht> Hello, Leute. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, this was Denglish. Um, just waiting. Ja, komm. Ah. I need to munch my vegetables. Uh, sometimes because uh, I was so pressed for time that I'm forced to just uh, squeeze my nutrition in here. Ah, Will! Nice to see you. Hello. Zeblas. So, you see here, um, I will just clean that up so we are seeing here just the archive of my uh, my clean browser in when I go into documents and I'm just waiting just a couple of minutes for people who are a bit late on time. I know it myself sometimes. Must Max <laughs> Daman. So, um, are you fine with the ratio? So, should I make myself bigger or smaller? Just tiny, tiny, tiny. I don't know. So, yeah, it's a bit, it's a pity that I can't read and write at the same time. But that will be no problem. I will just switch back and forth. So, I, uh, my plan is just to go spontaneously, just, uh, just to show you um, how um, how the Zettelkasten work uh, really functions and of course in a very clean archive so you can see it from the beginning. This archive, so this English test archive uh, will go public or I think it is already public, I don't know. Um, uh, so you have some kind of a sandbox and can uh, tinker a bit around uh, and see uh, yeah, what I did there. Hmm? So So, questions for the people. Um, is. Okay, now you see my personal messages with Christian. Abgeschnitten? Das sieht für mich wie Vollbild aus, nur dass dein Monitor ein großes Video hat. Ah! Okay, vielleicht doch nicht. Okay, Moment. That's oh yeah 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 yeah. Da hast du recht. Da hast du recht. So now I'm fitting in the window. Um, okay, Nick Labelle or Labelle uh, asked public in what way we have the uh, repository on GitHub. And I will just um, uh, upload it there, or it is already uploaded in this uh, in this current state. So, 
six minutes overdue, I think we can start. So if you have some suggestions, so uh, what would be nice um, to process, uh, then you can uh, make the suggestions in the chat. So I will start. In the, not in the last episode, but in, um, in a last or in a video, I demonstrated this, uh, this node, and my purpose was just to um, demonstrate the image, cap image capture. And you are seeing here already how, uh, how I work. So this little, um, oh, I'm sorry, this little um, signifier um, is meant to highlight structure nodes. The U, so how it, it's pronounced U in German, uh, is the first letter of the German word for overview. So it's not about uh, the, uh, it's not an S for structure node or something like that because back then, I think it was 2014 or 15, um, I called it overview nodes because it was more about overview. Uh, overview um, back then, or at least I thought it uh, that way, and um, then I just didn't change uh, the letter. So, we have a clean archive. So, what are we doing? What were we thinking about? And my suggestion is that I will just talk about something I know a bit at least, and then create the notes um, uh, while I'm thinking. So what I'm thinking now um, about is story and fitness. So let's start with fitness. Because the thing is, most of the time when we, uh, when we work with knowledge, it's kind of undirectional. And this is fine, but it forces us into the uh, collecting mode. That means we see something and we see that is useful uh, that it is useful for something. It grabs our eyes or grabs our attention and then we aim to process it, but we don't feel any relevancy. So relevancy is one of the important traits of knowledge. So this um, then I will um, Start with knowledge. So, ah, it's a pity I can't access now my um, my own little custom to just copy and paste, but I will uh, create it from head. So, knowledge has some difference uh, differences to information, and there's a lot about a lot. Uh, there's some theory about it, but I don't think um, most of it is practical. So, I developed or I came up with five traits of knowledge and or five signifiers of knowledge how to transform uh, transform information into knowledge so it's 7 p.m. and I already did two workouts and my dog got some kind of P uh, P uh, PTSD episode or something like that so uh, keep that in mind I'm not um, in my top form of uh, knowledge work so the first trait is, or I will just number it and then add it. Truth, relevancy, usefulness, beauty. And um, simpleness. So to explain, um, there are signifiers and my my uh, English will be bad so uh, just just to be warned uh, my written English is even worse than my spoken English but uh, it's understandable enough of knowledge signifiers so truth comes in two forms. Argument, arguments, theory, 
model, no, arguments in theory, and empirical. You can, you could say rational and empirical, and this would be evidence. So whenever you encounter something, you can transform information uh, into knowledge by asking yourself, how is the information true? So what makes the, the information true? Arguments, for example, are very, it's, it's a very simple concept. Arguments is a structure or an instrument um, by which you um, transport the truth of some statements to others. So I will just make a connection. Um, arguments as truth transportation mechanisms as tools for truth transportation so i don't i will not comment on um, on um, all the shortcuts and uh, or how i actually doing it so what i'm doing on the keyboard will be uh, hidden for you because um, this is kind of trivial it's it's just normal shortcuts and it's all about muscle memory so it can um, it can look a bit uh, quick and snappy but uh, it's not it's just uh, practice so arguments are arguments are basically tools for truth transportation the argument form um, is used to, to transport truth from the premises to the conclusion. Example. Um, classical example all humans are mortal. I am a mortal. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, this is ugly. Um, how we do it? Ah, okay, I don't want to uh, interfere. Ah, so it's a heading. Okay, then I will go with. Uh, also, therefore, I am mortal. So you can see um, one and two are kind of are definitely definitely okay. You see, I'm true. So. This is kind of the weakness of arguments. There's always a possibility of infinite regress. That means, imagine you are, you are a child and um, you are always asking why. And uh, so you can ask for the truth of it. So is it really that I'm a human? Perhaps I'm an alien or something like that. So I could prove you that I'm a human by perhaps a genetic test um, of mine. And this would be empirical. But then you could doubt it and say, okay, I only see the PDF on your GitHub repository. Uh, we need further truth. And then I'm making a photo or making a video of me while I'm in the uh, genetic lab and further and further proving that I'm a human, but it will never be certain. So there is, uh, you go to a point where you accept that the premises are true. So the premises should be almost trivial. And then you connect, this is a modus ponens, um, uh, um, so you have here the premises, and then the argument structure, in this, in this case, modus ponens, transportates uh, or transports the truth of those premises to this statement. And going back to um, 
to our original node. Mm. So this would be the link context. So how are we doing it? Arguments uh, compare. So this would be a, a very basic uh, a basic link context. Why? Because it's only one imperative. So to me, uh, this is very very trivial, and I will uh, never will forget uh, forget this in my life. So I'm kind of okay with the sloppy um, sloppy link context. But if I would use this. Um, for a text, I need to be more thorough with my link context, my explanation why I should follow this link, because later in the book, uh, when I use it, for example, in the book, um, this link context would be an explanation for the reader. So imagine I'm writing a chapter on knowledge and writing uh, this Oh, funny, I, I did actually did write uh, uh, did write it, and it's in the second uh, uh, second edition of the uh, of the Telecaster book. Then um, I write this chapter, or I will copy and paste this into uh, the chapter, and then this would be um, a signifier to me when I'm writing or editing the manuscript that I will uh, place a cross reference in my book and reference the paragraph where I explain that arguments are tr uh, tools of truth uh, transportation. But you see in the title this little word as. Um, in German it's V, uh, uh, I'm sorry, it's als. So th this uh, little word also always signifies um, basically definitions or models. Uh, the difference between definitions and models is somewhat uh, blurry. So a definition is basically um, it's basically information. Arguments are this and that. Um, if I think about um, think about a model or concept, it's I go more into depth. But it's more a practical uh, a practical difference, I think, uh, for now, as far as we are concerned, or as far as it's. Uh, uh, important. So, evidence. Evidence means uh, empirical evidence, so uh, it's about um, uh, yeah, studies, it's about uh, eyewitnesses and so on and so forth. And evidence is basically also a true mechanism. So, but I won't uh, link to another note. So, relevancy. Relevancy is a bit more important. What is relevancy? Relevancy is um, relevancy as as a reason for a reason for tension. Uh, for yeah, for attention. Um, what is the German, uh, the English word, um, attention. So um, sometimes I need to uh, to use uh, the dictionary aha distribution. So for extension distribution. So in English, it's normal that you write the text. With the lower case and not with the upper case, upper case, and um, so relevancy is all is is a reason to to uh, give something your attention. The amount of attention. Should give this something this metric for relevancy. So we have two components of this node. So this would be 
just the definition and this is a metric. So we have even here a definition and the definition uh, gives birth to some kind of tool to measure relevancy. So this is of course not very practical because um, this word should means that reasons to give something attention is a metric for relevancy and reasons are of course subjective and uh, not quantitative. So let me go into the chat and read something. Whoa! Okay, I'm online. One from Somerset. No, it's good. Public in what way? Inception, yes. Looking into the Zettel, Zettel Abyss. Suggestions depend on what topic you decide on. Yes. Um, how do you type math equations in the archive? Not yet. Might be interesting to use Zettel Custom e blog posts as literature. Ah, yes. So, um, perhaps we go, okay, this short of Rome, what was the last, backlinks, oh, this would be a can of worms. Ah, Christian, we have not yet these short thumbnails on Zettelkasten, oder? Nee, haben wir nicht. Achso, die auf dem Blog ist, äh, äh, sag ich mal, auf dem Blog sind immer noch die vollen Artikel. Ja. Okay. So. so. Um, yep. I just, uh, uh, you can open uh, uh, the Zellkasten, die posts and perhaps make a suggestion. I leave it open. I will resume in the chat. And then, if no suggestion came, I will search uh, search uh, appropriate article. So, Henrik, hello. Clint Laskowski asks, um, "Can anyone tell me what tool is being used?" It says the archive at the top left. Yes, it's the archive, the best app on earth, better even than uh, Firefox. Mm, it's quite pixelated. Okay, yeah, it can it can happen uh, the pixelation because of um, uh, yeah my streaming quality, but I think it should be fine. Uh, at least when it's rendered, so it's saved on YouTube and for later watch. Um, things you can replicate a lot of blah blah. I wonder where the potato. Wow. So Linux, no, 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 no. it's only me. Can I hear noise? A noise during his speech. Yes, it might be my. Um, it might be some white noise because I was forced to use my Mac or my the speakers of my uh, the microphone the built-in microphone of my laptop and uh, some white noise is uh, uh, it's just there so do you ever put in definitional notes to understand a word for example put in a link to what you mean by signifier um, what do you mean so a source of uh, source of definition. If I uh, would pull a definition from other sources, of course, then uh, I would put um, uh, put a reference to the to the source of the definition. But if I think it's a good rule of thumb, if you have difficulties to understand a definition, then it's not a good definition. Mm christian du bist ja richtig präsent hier im making notes out of the blog post on backlinks 
Oh, backlinks, yes, the kind of worms. Worms or worms? Worms, I think. Ah, yes, Josh, uh, uh, Josh writes. Um, also, add to Christian's point, collecting different definitions about one term from multiple sources into one definition note is helpful. Yes. So, I will show you um, uh, what this means. So, um, happening and we basically have little to no control compared to this approach consciousness attention is as a spot light just uh, gives attention as a spotlight um, just okay bad, bad style just highlights a fraction of what is present in every moment so this would be um, not exactly a definition, but more of a concept. So you don't see attention is a spotlight, but attention is like a spotlight. So um, it's not exactly a, a metaphor, even it, uh, there's some similarity to, to metaphor. So the difference between metaphor and model is that metaphors are basically a mean to give you a feel for something. So if I tell you that uh, your lips are, uh, are soft as the leaves of a rose, um, then I try to give you a feel for the lips. But it's not a model. So a rose, uh, uh, leaves of a rose is not a model for lips. Um, a model is basically... Uh, reduction of reality so we can uh, manipulate it with our um, with our mind or with our actions so imagine uh, what a good model of uh, of a tree uh, I'm sorry of um, of a plane is so knowledge perhaps I could go here um, Models, no, knowledge structures. Um, so, and arguments, evidence. Oh, I hope I get it complete here. Uh, evidence, facts, theory, model. So, Um, as tools for transportation. Uh, models as production. So imagine 
I don't have any clue about the definition, then I would just place an example here. Um, a model of the plane is then is a good model if it simulates. simulates ah, better. A flight sim, simulating. Simulator is then a good model for flight if it resembles the physics of actual flying. So, what is included? Included in included aspects of reality. Um, are physics um, cause and uh, cause and what's this Wirkung of English? Ah, schämst du dich? Uh, ask Christian if he's ashamed because I don't didn't uh, have the word effect at my hands. Cause and effect. Um, so if you um, steer the wheel or um, press a button to the left, then it should go to the left, and so on and so forth. Um, excluded of reality, the actual plane. So it would be a rather uh, un not so useful um, flight simulator if you simulate the flight, but also needed a plane, an actual plane. So uh, I think if you uh, train pilots, they have just the cockpit or model of the cockpit and not, of course, the real plane. Um, and perhaps even the cockpit in case of um, in case of uh, a computer uh, use for uh, use as computer game and so on and so forth. So you see, in this case, I just wrote an example, and the definition would be warrant. So perhaps I can I can come up with a definition if I look at it, the example with enough intensity. So models are reductions of reality definition there are the map cannot be identical with first they need to correspond with reality at least in one common trait they need they need to be to exclude uh, exclude traits uh, or perhaps is attribute seems a better word I don't know uh, attribute that is attributes that D decreases the intended use. So, our reductions of reality, so we have here, so we, we go back to the knowledge and perhaps I can reconnect uh, this node to our knowledge thing. So we have this node, relevancy as a reason for attention distribution. Um, Examples of uh, reasons. Reasons might be better. So, usefulness, beauty, joy, um, danger. Mm. So. Okay, and the, I I will I will make it real. So I I just 
this you see this is the the reason um, why I really don't like public um, well, I'm dirty um, I'm because of my dog <laughs> um, uh, if you use a saddle custom or, or uh, write in a saddle custom and you know that it is basically public you are writing differently so this etc is basically me communicating with you not me using the saddle custom so uh, two uh, uh, two purposes get mingled together or mushed together and this makes for sloppy work this is sloppy work don't do it So we have this usefulness, usefulness, mm. do we know a good definition of usefulness? So I could describe it, so perhaps I just describe it for now, usefulness, um, means that, it, that the knowledge structure is a mean or a tool to do a job. Huh. This could be transformed into a nice definition, but I won't do it for now. So because of I, uh, I just demonstrated, you see I leave some gaps. So it's okay to leave gaps. I think it's um I feel a bit misunderstood because I uh, propagated the do it do it everything like uh, thoroughly uh, very hard but it's not that you need to be thorough or uh, uh, complete with every note it's like it's like an ideal and you should aim for completeness when processing notes so I talked for a long as time so perhaps I go into the chat. Uh, also, blah, blah, blah. Josh Allison, that's what I'm trying to do with my system as well. What wrote Josh? Ah. Ah, yes. Attention as a spotlight. Attention as a finite resource. So what I'm doing is, did I resource? Why is it wrong? So resource. Yeah, this is this is rather wrong. Can you give me the correct? No, it's correct. Resource, uh, resource, English with one S. You minimalist. Are you? So, attention is a finite resource. Uh, resource first. It has limitations in um, the moment. You cannot uh, cannot pay attention to, to everything at the same same time. Example, you, you, if you concentrate on the screen, trying to speak and write English at the same time, you, your dog, which you like a lot, is basically invisible to you. 
Um, it has also uh, limitations over the long run. So, let's say short term, it has limitations long term. Or let's, let's say mid term. If you use your attention a lot during the day, you will have difficulty to concentrate on something later in the day. So, this would be a definition. Attention is a finite resource. And um, these are two pieces of evidence. So even if you just have, an, have a definition, um, and definitions are not susceptible to the concept of truth in the strict sense. So I can define everything as everything. For example, I can define my car uh, as a rabbit and say my car is a rabbit um, because X, Y, and Z. And I can think of some common trait or uh, whatnot. But uh, this is not how the world works. So a definition is basically a tool. So, um, and you can see it in the last part. So this would be um, a claim on the truth. It is, attention is a finite resource. So if we can, can, uh, can come up with, with limitations of uh, attention in some way or another, then we have evidence uh, for the definition. So evidence would be a means to basically say this concept has a good correspondation uh, or corresponds with reality. So it pick, uh, maps reality fine. Um, but you can see here when I go in a third definition, attention, attention has a um, economic resource. Ah, so you see my German is very strong in me. Attention is an oh yes yeah so so is it just a wrong spelling or is it a grammatical error? Um, economic economic resource. Ah, it's an economic resource. I could write evidence, but I won't. Um, attention is the precursor for uh, decisions, and decisions are partly and some decisions are economically. Um, I could say relevant because even if I don't uh, make the decision to buy something, um, my, def my decisions could be economically uh, relevant. So for example, if I, um, if I decide to uh, create something myself, then I'm deciding, or let's imagine I, instead of uh, buying, uh, buying me a table, a, a table calendar, then um, and just building it myself, then my decision is not like a decision to buy something, but to not to buy something indirectly. So my my decision to um, to make uh, make have some do-it-yourself hobby 
for example. So an, an identity decision. So I decide now I'm not uh, not a cog in the uh, in the big economic machinery, but I will exclude something some parts of my life from the economic machinery and um, will uh, build as much as I can or as I decide to uh, myself. Then um, my decision on my identity will be uh, economically uh, relevant. But this is not what I mean in this case. So, uh, not relevant, but uh, economically uh, buying decisions. So, I... Uh, no. So, um, so sellers, no, um, no, sellers need to grab, uh, grab the attention of some people to sell and earn money. This, this mechanics is exploited by the attention merchants. See, so Tim Wu uh, wrote a book, Attention Merchants, a huge recommendation for me. Um, it's basically a historical, um, an historical study on how our attention is not only manipulated but harvested and I think he I think he uh, used the word harvested and uh, or to harvest and uh, uh, this resonated with me because uh, attention is not something you grab or uh, that is grabbed but it can be harvested so it's a, a commodization of something that is intimately human or not only intimately human but it's very very uh, close to what we would call the soul uh, so big recommendation uh, it's both the attention versions facebook and other social media use um, use cognitive uh, vulnerabilities to hold as much attention from each user to sell this attention to uh, companies. It's not exactly correct because as a private person I think you can also buy some ads. Uh, it would be very funny if you buy just an ad for your private messengers, perhaps I would uh, buy an ad which basically says um, that I really, really like chocolate ice cream. No, it's a lie. Chocolate ice cream is not so my favorite. Um, I think my favorite at the moment is raspberry ice cream. Wouldn't wouldn't it be funny? Please say it would be funny. No, don't. I don't like. Uh, yes, man. So, uh, yeah, basic rule of life: don't don't surround yourself with yes men. Um, what is much uh, blah blah blah? Yes. So, where are we going there? So you see, I will clean it up. Uh, uh, Concepts. So this is how it looks when I am doing it myself. Uh, and uh, then I will then I will make it a bit pretty. So if you have a lot of definitions 
uh, you can basically see more of the mechanics that goes uh, that lie behind the concept. So, for example, um, if I think about what attention, what it means that attention could be seen as a spotlight, um, and combined with the other um, uh, the other concepts, then it could give rise to an idea. So, let's write something. Uh, If attention is a finite, finite resource and it is an equal, is finite, and pretty economic resource, there will be, there will be a fight for attention uh, fight for this limited resource will the attention merchants in who it's ju this is just for you uh, I will keep it in there the attention merchants will in will be feel forced so it's not that they don't have a choice so what social media companies are doing right now is highly unethical because they are using cognitive vulner uh, vulnerabilities um, just to manipulate our attention and the funny thing is um, no CEO or high uh, uh, or person in the high management allow um, allow their own kids uh, to use uh, digital media or go on social media or so on. They know, they know how toxic social media actually is, so they protect their own and you know, basically exploit and poison uh, the others. So this is why social media CEOs are insanely immoral people. Not very on, on the personal level, so I, I think uh, most of them are, can be actually very nice and um, uh, nice people, but uh, they are participating in a very immoral uh, uh, decision system. So feel forced to uh, to use more and more um, means to grab. Attention and the end game will be um, no. I don't know the end game. More means to grab attention. It, as time goes on, uh, exploits of cognitive vulnerabilities will be more probable and even unethical practices like nudging and um, obscuration uh, so blurring I don't think this is the correct word uh, disguise, blow ups, uh, obfuscation, obfuscation, telecommunication, yes, I like this word, um, and obfuscation of uh, privacy settings in common place. So, doesn't it sound familiar? I called Facebook out with their very insane, uh, insane practices in this uh, in this area. So attention is a finite resource, and 
and economic resource. From this economic, uh, there will be a fallout effect from the economic world to the subjective reality of people will live in. One mean of, of exploitation of cognitive um, of cognitive uh, vulnerability is to uh, to stick the inner spotlight stick attention as a inner spotlight to some thoughts against the best interest of the individual. So, you see here, it's created knowledge. So, what did I do here? It's like um, I collected a bunch of concepts and you can, okay, now it's of course in a very short time span, it's like uh, yeah, 15 minutes or so, or 16 minutes here, uh, but uh, even those, uh, uh, my collection of this concept would be like years apart. The Seven Custom would allow me to see them all in one place, so collecting concepts and putting them together can be um, a productive way of setting up your settle custom for uh, for knowledge production why is it knowledge here so i managed to highlight or to come up with a mechanism a causal mechanism in the real world that was not uh, that i didn't know before so let's look at knowledge um Go with relevancy. Oh. So, no, we go with everything. So, let's create a new node and how do we call it? The fallout of how attention, how economy hurts the hmm the soul so I will go for a big word attention merchant So fragmentation means so some thoughts will and um, the result the result will be a fragmentation. No. No, that is wrong. So what I wanted to write is that the result of this mechanics uh, will be a fragmentation of uh, attention and attention uh, is basically identical with consciousness. Um, or like uh, all those concepts have a big overlap in reality. So uh, if you are conscious of something, you uh, you invest your attention to it uh, or into it. So it's very, very uh, tied together. And if you have no control over your attention, you are losing consciousness. So basically what those people are doing is, um, is uh, robbing, robbing the people uh, of their consciousness and what soul do we have if we don't have consciousness we are reduced to animals and I don't mean it in a uh, 
a romantic way because animals of course not of course but I think they have a soul <laughs> at least my dog has a soul uh, not a very nice soul I, I must say because she's a bit uh, a bit uh, uh, sassy I must say uh, but um, she has a soul and um, the issue is that the human soul is something different from the animal soul. So this is really, I mean soul, so, so you know. Um, and fragmentation is basically, um, I had a talk on yeah yesterday about meditation, like a three hour, uh, nearly three, three hour podcast uh, I record with a really long-term meditator and uh, a researcher on the topic and uh, fragmentation is one of the um, one of the core sicknesses of the modern person um, so because I thought about that or I, I talked about that uh, yesterday I think I uh, came up with this but this is not correct. It's not about fragmentation here. Um, there's interest of the soul. The soul needs oh, control over one's inner spotlight. It means that you are um, Okay, let's make a pause. Perhaps I get an idea. So, uh, where are, uh, okay, Obsidian, Obsidian or Settler for a new PhD student. I can't say, uh, give you a good opinion on that. Just use the archive. Which is the best opinion, of course. <laughs> uh, Special terms are so varying, lol. Yes, um, I hope I uh, I showed you um, how you can use different um, different concepts. Um, the thing is, definitions and concepts are some are so related that it's difficult. Um, or concept and a definition. Uh, or the concept of concept and the concept of definition um, are so are in such a proximity that that you uh, it, it's difficult to um, to distinguish them. So a definition would be something uh, descriptive. I define x as y, and over and out. Um, the question might be: Okay, does it is it useful to uh, to define x as y, or shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be defined as z. Um, this would be the question. And a concept, I think, or a concept is a better concept than the concept of definition. So I I think it's a bit I mushed it be, uh, a bit uh, together. What I want to say uh, wanted to say, but um, I hope you get some idea. So it's not like the thing is, in when you are um, when you are reading, and everybody uses specific terms, um, you don't need to see them as statements of how the reality is, but more as statements how the reality can be understood, and then it's more easy. So you saw it in here, uh, in here with my. Um, with my work on these three definitions. So, I think, uh, um, I don't think in my own settle custom, um, those three definitions came from me. I think um, the definition of as a spotlight, uh, it could be from, from Csikszentmihalyi, so the uh, main flow researcher. Uh, I don't know, but I think, uh, but I think it's uh, uh, they're all from other people, but it doesn't matter. 
it doesn't matter where, where the source comes from, a, a concept is a concept, and, it's, and the source is not part of the knowledge structure. The source um, is basically just a reference, and the reference is only important to give credit to the intellectual um, power and, and, um, and to the in intellectual achievement to others. Uh, and so uh, um, it's not very important where the um, where it comes from. And you see, I don't distinguish, for example, uh, between literature notes and permanent notes. I just think in my settle custom. So this is really how I could work in the settle custom. It's not s blind how the uh, let's players uh, would define uh, um, uh, their let's play. So a blind let's play means the player um, or let's plays are basically someone plays a computer game and records it and then uh, publish it on uh, Twitch or YouTube or something like that and um, if the player doesn't know the game in before it's blind also it's called blind and uh, it's not blind when he or she knows it before um, so what I did was not blind so I knew the uh, I knew the definitions and it just came spontaneously this is borderline new because I think I thought it, but I don't know if I have this thought in my Zettel custom yet. Um, I th I don't think so. No, I'm I'm quite sure that I don't have this, uh, especially this thought in my Zettel custom yet. So when I uh, when I am finished with this stream, oh, then I will. Probably let my dog uh, do uh, do her business um, outside, but then uh, and go to sleep. But I th in the next morning, I will go back to this note and basically process my own note, but without reference, of course, because I am uh, reference. But I these references here will be, of course, uh, changed because I have true or my own notes uh, in my own. Uh, Zell custom uh, in that. So I forgot where I started, so I just pretend that I uh, was just reading the comments. Especially in terms of philosophy, I'm using using with my degree. Uh, what program I using? I'm using. I'm doing the arts. How do you handle? Ah, uh, no, not. Jumping, please. Ah, Nick Labelle asked, how do you handle words that have slightly different definitions depending on the field that is studying it? Um, basically like that, because in my settle custom there are no fields. I, uh, I could have... Um, uh, I don't don't be uh, off put because I grab my boot here uh, my boob. Um, it's I have a strange injury I can't uh, I can't figure out or I'm slow to figure out and so I'm massaging it because uh, it improves uh, the healing process. Um, the problem the problem of the field is that the fields are divided with incoherent um, mechanisms. So, what, for example, what is philosophy? Philosophy is basically a game of language. So, the premise of philosophy, or this would be a definition of philosophy that goes by the mean of knowledge production. Um, uh, but others, for example, include empirical philosophy. I think I have even no, I have a book on uh, that I didn't read uh, read yet on uh, experimental philosophy. So uh, it's not only um, incoherent, but it's um, everyone has a different opinion on the field. So um, it's way easier to just assume that there's a unity in 
in knowledge. So, and, and basically there is, you can see the unity in here. Um, these are universal traits of knowledge. So truth is basically a trait of knowledge wherever your field comes from. And sometimes it's useful to use a term like in one field and in another field a term is more useful uh, or a different concept is useful uh, in another field. So to me this is how I deal with all no this is not to me I think this is basically how you can see the actual layer of reality so to say. So um, you, you see here it's a this is more a uh, definition as, uh, this is a psychological definition or a psychologi uh, psychological uh, concept of attention. Because the resource attention is finite, not because of the limitations of the people. This would be from the economic uh, perspective or, uh, or social perspective. But I'm strict here uh, to the psychological aspect. This is in the realm of social uh, uh, of the social life, so this would be individual, this would be so, uh, social, and those are basically different fields. This would be more uh, relevant for a psychologist, and this would be more relevant for economist or a social sociologist. Uh, you see, I'm butchering the words, um, but in my Zettelkasten, all comes together. I think. Yeah, I think it's enough with all this, uh, all this drawing boundaries between fields. It's they are just a bunch of methods and a bunch of research objects. So if I think about attention, I don't limit myself to the views of one uh, of one field. I don't think as a uh, as a uh, sociology guy about. Uh, attention nor I just think about uh, I think about attention uh, just as a psychologist or like whatever um, I think about attention and I think about attention in a way uh, that is appropriate to attention and that means I pull my methods from all the fields so methods are not a useful way to distinguish fields uh, research research objects could be a better um, could be a better uh, way to define it, but then you have just other problems. So, my answer is uh, I ignore different, or I ignore the difference between fields. So, uh, Leon Orms, Leon Ormes, uh, Leon Ormes um, asks, how do you go about discovering new connections in your notes, as in how do you find links you didn't expect between notes that seem unrelated? Does this require a certain number of useful notes? No. And you saw it basically here in the attention note. Um, this was a new and unexpected connection. Um, this note happened because I saw these uh, these uh, these notes uh, next to each other and then I thought about it and then I made a new connection and the connection or the uh, the new note is called how attention economy hurts the soul so I hope um, yeah, this this directly answers your, your question. It's like, I did it. I did it in front of you. It was really, it was new uh, to me. And this is how um, new connections in your archive or in your cell custom arises. And um, uh, yeah, there's no magic to it. And you see how many notes did I got? Uh, do I have 13 notes? So 
Um, as proven, at least by this example, um, you need no more than 13 notes to make this new and unexpected uh, connections. Paolo Wagner asks, what is U1? There's no need to apologize. Uh, ah, Josh uh, answered it. Yes, uh, it's just a signifier for, um, uh, for structure notes. It stems from the, uh, yeah, and Leo, uh, Leon Orms uh, answered it. Uh, do, 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 do. How do, you create? do you create backlinks in all child notes? No, I don't like. Uh, you can start thinking about backlinks. Oh, it's it's a bit manipulative. What I uh, uh, what I uh, uh, said there. Mm. Start with this. Uh, start with this article. I don't use backlinks. Backlinks are basically just a mean, um, just a mean to um, to navigate your archive. But a backlink is almost never useful. One might argue that the backlink, um, the backlink would be um, useful, uh, useful um, for that manner. So. If you, if I had a backlink for all this attention notes, um, oh, am I thinking in the right direction? Let me sort myself out. Uh, no, in this, even in this case, it wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be happening because um, this would only have the backlink uh, to. Those or those would be the backlinks to this node. So um, imagine, imagine uh, I see this and this, oh, this and this node. Those two nodes are not very related because this is basically the structure node that uh, entails all the other nodes on attention. So, no, but you see, I'm, I'm getting a bit tired. So I think uh, today I won't be able to do a useful two hour stream. So perhaps uh, 10 more minutes um, and then I will uh, call it a day and um, chill out. So, oh, Alcon. Um, when, when is a good time to create structure notes and why? Thank you for uh, this awesome treat. Oh, you're welcome. Um, yeah, you, you saw I'm, I uh, didn't manage to eat my vegetables at all, so I will eat vegetables late, and this will worsen my sleep because. Uh, Having a full stomach is mostly not a good idea when you go to sleep. Um, a half full stomach is way better. Um, I think a structure note, perhaps in a in another stream, um, perhaps in, a, in another stream, it uh, I will go to it. It's kind of a difficult question because there are many reasons, to, uh, many reasons to create a structure node. So I, you saw it in here, uh, in here, uh, you saw it, uh, how I did it. I basically created the structure nodes um, right from the beginning. So I start with a structure node, and most of the time, if I have something new, a new topic, a new project, or whatnot. I will start with a structure note because a structure note is not only something for your Zettelkasten. It's basically can, uh, the canvas on which you th 
can think. So you saw it here. I collected the uh, the three concept of concepts of uh, attention, and then I saw the connection and wrote uh, wrote, uh, wrote the new idea, the unexpected, the the mystical unexpected connection, just where I had it, and used the structure note on attention just as my canvas. And then, of course, when I was finished, I tidied, um, uh, made it more pretty and uh, tidied it up. Is it, is it right? Tidied it up? Uh, kind of strange to say it. Torren. Goodbye. I hope you have the opportunity to, uh, to see the rest. Um, Leon Orms, you seem to be able to hold a lot of this material in your head. Is this a result of using Zellkasten for all these years or you just know this material? Um, if I am able to hold a lot of this material in my head, uh, I never compared me to uh, other people. Uh, besides Christian, but we have like a very interesting uh, <laughs> relationship, so so of course I think I'm the best. Oh, Christian is already vomiting uh, because he very likes likes it when I get cocky. Um, no, but um, um, it's basically the same. I cannot distinguish it. So even if we assume that I can hold a lot of material in my head. Um, it is at least partial of using a settle custom because using a settle custom means if you use it right, uh, if you use it right, you process everything what you are thinking about, or not what you are thinking about, you process every information. Uh, the correct usage of settle custom of your settle custom is as an integrated thinking environment. Uh, or thought development environment. Big head tip to uh, Thomas Tepe, who came up with this term. Um, and if you thought about something very deeply, and even this would count, this would count as thinking about it deeply, not very deeply. So it can be way more, uh, uh, way more deep. But if you think about this in that way, um, you just need some hints. It's just about seeing some headlights. Then it will jump to your consciousness and then you have it in your working memory. I think, um, or when I test it, I have a good working memory, but um, you need to, you need to uh, take into consideration that I'm, going over this material over and over again. For example, the book of Tim Wu. Um, um, I didn't just read it, but I reviewed every footnote, or not every footnote in the book, but whenever I read, uh, read a book, I go, uh, I attack it with the Bible method. So, I read it once and mark all the paragraphs I um, mark all the paragraphs I, I I make myself a bit bigger I think uh, my stream is it okay can you hear me so um, when I think uh, uh, no when I read I have I read it once and uh, place a dot next to every um, Next to every ah, the sound might be so. Uh, next to every um, uh, paragraph, I deem worthy to read a second time. So either because I didn't understand it properly enough, or feel that I didn't understand it properly enough, or um, um, or I. Um, find it very useful or very wrong or something like that. 
so it grabs my attention. Then I go um, and place the book next to my computer, and then I reread the book, but only the uh, only the paragraphs I marked. And when I read a paragraph like that, I will look at all references that the author uh, that the author uses. So it's not only I read the book, but I read the references that are pre-filtered by my judgment of a paragraph. Um, a paragraph's worthiness of attention. So it's like I'm I'm using uh, using the process of uh, of reading as a pre-selective mechanism to deepen uh, to deepen my understanding by going into primary literature. So if you go uh, if you work like this, there's no other choice or no other possibility that you um, that you increase your retention because. Retention is basically, I think, about three things. It's about emotional intensity. So, if um, let's imagine I um, I meet you on the street, you say hi, Sasha. I know you from Zettelkasten Day, and then I scream in your face, um, pull down my pants, and call you an asshole, and then run away, uh, yodeling. I think you will remember this uh, uh, for the rest of your life because it's emotionally intense. It's about social embarrassment. It's about strangeness. It's about um, like a strange connection between us, and so on and so forth. Or perhaps in a more family-friendly example would be um, uh, just something shocking or something uh, um, super super happy or something like that. Uh, so emotional uh, emotional intensity is uh, important for retention. Um, uh, repetition repetition is the most boring and uh, the most fragile uh, aspect of retention. I think. Oh, don't don't bust my ass, please, uh, uh, with all these different concepts of memory, retention, recall, and so on and so forth. I just use it as a catch-all term for now, uh, and I'm not. Uh, able enough to speak English to, to have this all sorted out with all the different uh, words. Uh, we had emotional intensity, repetition, and the last one is understanding. If you had like an eureka moment, is it eureka, Christian? Yeah. So, Christian, Christian uh, uh, confirmed me. Eureka moment. It's highly likely that you can remember it then. The, very well well perhaps because the eureka moments are also emotionally intense um, I don't know yet um, uh, but this is the reason and to see the settle custom improves okay the settle custom doesn't shock me so perhaps if Christian uh, would uh, include a feature like a random um, pan pull down now or something like that you could increase retention um, but it's repetitive so you go over and over and, uh, on uh, you see notes over and over again and reread them and reformulate them and so on for, so forth and of course you if you use the settle custom right you increase your understanding and uh, increase uh, a uh, uh, no I think in, in German it's a ha moment because in German when you have an insight, you say, aha, uh, it's basically the, the shout out, so, uh, or Eureka moment, uh, moment of insight, I need a less strong word for my taste. Uh, so, I hope, Leon, this answers your question. Um, yeah, Josh Ellison, raspberry ice cream, big muscles. Raspberry is for super big guns, but I fear that the ice cream part is not very helpful, but raspberries are super helpful, uh, helpful, uh, healthy. So, and health equals big gains. Ah, Nick Lavelle. So you have the concept definition. What other structure note sections on attention would you create? Uh, it's basically bottom up for now. So let me. Go to the archive. Um, 
So another sub a subject would be attention economy. Um, this would be uh, perhaps conceptual, and then I could uh, do it like this. Um, conceptual, psychological. Please give me. And then if I go uh, I would go like this. This is not part. Mm. And perhaps uh, how to is a very fairly common subsection. So if it grows too big, so on how to would be very extended, uh, extensive in my uh, in my uh, experience because I work a lot on tools. So this would be perhaps uh, meditation is in a, in a way uh, flow work, uh, concentration exercises, habits, and so on and so forth. So I would create uh, yeah. This, yeah, this is how it could look like, but most of the time I try to be flexible. So I have, I have um, a, a scheme, a template. I have a template for structure notes, but I used like for two years and then I quit using it because it got too inflexible to me. So in my, I'm, I'm quite hesitant to uh, share templates because in my opinion they are not so useful because they make you stiff and the more stiff you are in your thinking the worse your knowledge work will get so let me show you my face again um, so I hope this answers the question I won't repeat it. It's like a like a mantra. I hope this uh, hope it's answered the question, uh, but I always hope that my answer answers the question. Would be foolish not to hope. Um, the observation discussion on duality of attention and consciousness was really interesting. Trying to work out some notes for my own syllabus. Yeah, it's like this is I, to me this is big. Because um, in my own settle custom, I have like some concepts that are like uh, how is it called in in English dual dual star system or something like that. So the sun is basically a stationary star. I hope the sun is a star. Uh, yes, it is. And um, in a dual star system, I don't know if the English word uh, uh, is correct the stars circle around each other and in my subcustom there are like multiple 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 star uh, systems where concepts like uh, like circle each other and orbit each other and uh, regarding the, the attention and consciousness uh, thing uh, it's will it's consciousness it's attention it's soul um, yeah, concentration is basically just an afterthought of attention. Concentration is basically like if you think about attention as a spotlight or a beam, you can think of concentration just as in, in two aspects. Concentration would be directional, so you concentrate on something and not another, but concentration means like focusing and like making making sunlight into a laser um, like a lens and uh, so concentration is basically just a sub a subtopic you could say of attention but uh, yeah the, the topic is very deep I hope I can publish my thoughts uh, uh, before you and we don't have like this big argument uh, uh, 
like Leibniz and Newton had. It was then, um, was it? Christian, weißt du das noch? Äh, wer mit wem Newton so einen so äh, Veröffentlichungsscheiß hatte? Ach, in Richtung? Yes. Leibniz, yes. Christian confirmed. Christian is my master confirmer today. Um, yeah, Leibniz and Newton uh, had an argument who, uh, who came up with some mathematics in I, I just can pron I barely can pronounce it in German, so I don't uh, pronounce it in English. So, will yes, mine can be yes, thank you. <sighs> Dioclicio, Dioclicio, Dio Camello. So, I think it's Italian or Portuguese or Spanish. Um, Nothing. Okay. Dio, Dio click you. Uh, Camelo. Sasha, how would, you, would I reduce a deep accumulated thought that's been elaborated in a sequence of notes? Do I create a structure note or synthesis note? Um, my first recommendation would be uh, that you don't distinguish between those note types. Um, yes, we need names for different uh, for different uh, forms of notes, but um, there's no real difference between a structure note and a synthesis note, because on a structure note you could base or you could argue that the structure notes uh, structure note synthesize other notes. A structure note is basically, I think, meta note. Meta note is the best term for it, uh, for the, or for this type of note. So a note on other notes, but it's not a note just about the fact that there are other notes, but about the content of the note, uh, of of the other note. So this structure notes of attention is not about uh, just collecting other notes of uh, on attention, but it's about the whole topic of attention. So. Um, Yeah, let's go back. Let's uh, let's go back to um, uh, to the attention uh, structure note. So what you see here is I wrote this note, and you could argue that this is what you mean by a synthesis note, because it's a thought that spans over three notes, and in itself, so it uses the concepts the three concepts of attention and um, at the same time it adds a lot of meat so to say uh, to these thoughts and is in its own thought uh, in its own thought in itself so um, so the triple Q is always my uh, my bookmark for unfinished Uh, unfinished stuff or stuff I want to continue. Um, but imagine that I expand and expand this note. At some point, it would be unbearable. It was like many many pages. Then I would, uh, then I would uh, restructure it, and it would basically turn into a structure note. So I could go strategically and just create a structure note uh, in advance or just write the note and let it be how it is and then when I expand it some in, at some point in time uh, decide to make it a structure note. So from this standpoint I hope it's uh, I hope I made um, made a good explanation why I don't think the I don't think it's useful to think uh, 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 in, in terms of workflow and node types because uh, this is one of the problems I think in the Zettelkasten field so to say there is no true workflow of the Zettelkasten so I could explain to you uh, uh, explain to you my personal workflow how I uh, use my Zettelkasten besides the occasional just drop a note in there and paste a few links. Um, I read books and mark them and then twice a week I sit down and process them. 
and uh, you saw it like this. I think in in the next stream, I think this will be in a reoccurring event. In the next stream, I will just process. Um, I process just an article. I think I need to pre-select the article. It needs, of course, it needs to be uh, online, uh, um, so you can access uh, uh, access the article yourself. Um, but there's no workflow. Workflow is not part of the Zettelkasten method. Its uh, workflow is more a thing of your daily life and how you attack a certain problem. So, for example, there's no really no true workflow in getting things done, I think, because I don't have a getting things... I use getting things done or like uh, the 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 uh, rough framework of getting things done to organize myself, but I don't use getting things done workflows or something like that. I just... When I have a to-do, I just write it at the place where it needs to belong. And uh, that's all. And so... Work, yeah, workflow. I think um, it could be uh, it could be a proxy for um, for intermediate understanding of the settle custom method. If um, if you think too much on workflow topics, so and where do I put the node on the beginning or the end of the chain? Um, the node would be neither in the end nor in the uh, in the beginning, because in my case, for example, the node would be. Um, uh, can I draw it? Simple. Ah, oh, it's too dark. Yeah, our sunlight is disappearing, so I can't do a drawing. Um, but it's basically um, the parent node or the the. Parent node is um, uh, the structure node on attention, and then there are three um, three uh, uh, definitions or concepts basically on attention, and then I wrote the synthesis node or what you call synthesis node um, on the structure node, and then refactor, uh, refactor it into its own node, and then basically the structure is uh, more circular. So um, I could go go in a circle if I follow uh, uh, the links and the backlinks. So um, there's no no placement in the chain, so to say. Nick Labelle. So if I butcher some names, uh, feel free to to point out the correct pronunciation. I uh, I don't like learning. Uh, I don't like learning languages, but I like learning pronunciation. Um, Nick Labelle, in your concept node, would you abstract out what all three nodes on attention have in common and put it on your on the to at the top? I think you mean structure node, or don't you? Uh, so. Uh, I think you mean okay let me reread it so so much about holding a lot in my head um, would you abstract out of all three notes on attention have in common and put it so it could be yes uh, it could really be because if I think uh, sometimes it happens that I have some concepts and then I make a more general, uh, a more general concept that uh, that is more like a meta concept. I think um, I think it will be more useful when I do it in another stream and demonstrate how uh, how you can merge models together and therefore create meta models because concept and model is like it's it's very similar and. Uh, uh, yeah, basically, concept is a concept, and model is also a concept. And both concepts have different uh, different applications in different uh, circumstances. So, I think I need to um, demonstrate it in another stream under the disguise of merging models together. So, 
Um, thinking is writing, writing is thinking. Yes, well, you got it. Sasha is exposing uh, his thinking in real time. Thanks. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, oh. Where is... No, but no. So, yeah, I think I won't... I will not go back uh, to the Zettelkasten. I just will answer your questions and then I call it a day because I think... Uh, yeah, after I'm basically up since six o'clock in the morning, and uh, here it's nine o'clock in the evening, and I basically had no no real rest. No, it's not true. I ate and then I watched some videos, but I had no cognitive pause, so my batteries are low. My internal, my attention. My attention is finite and I'm reaching its limits. The book Make It Stick has a great story like this. Make It Stick. Ah, yes. I think I heard of the book. I need to make a note. Uh, okay. Ooh. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because um, if there's a debate if computer games are addictive and the fact that computer games strive to be the most fun uh, is proof enough that they at least try to make computer games addictive. They make, they try to make everything addictive. It's kind of, lo it's kind of logical because if you're addicted to some product you increase, um, uh, increase revenue or the addiction means for the companies to uh, increase revenue and a bigger share of the consumption. So in the modern world, this is something uh, very few people, I think, think about is that the consumer gets the, uh, will be the rare resource, the limited resource. So it's a huge battle for the consumer and it's not the other way around. We have a surplus of products, so products are not the limited resource in this exchange. So we have an oversupply, a super duper oversupply, and therefore it drives the, pr the prices down and productivity up. So relative productivity, uh, relative uh, productivity per person that is working, this is um, a good thing. But as people, uh, as uh, real per uh, people, I mean, we need to learn to manage uh, ourselves and truly harness our power as uh, um, as as persons who uh, who deliberately um, uh, choose what attention we uh, throw out in the world. So you you see, my English gets worse and worse and worse. Uh, that's why they tell you to relate what you are learning to your life because it has emotional connection. Uh, yes, but I think it's more useful to um, uh, it's more useful to uh, see it under the umbrella of relevancy. The more relevant, because it uh, you also wrote emotional for learning makes sense for uh, from evolution standpoint. Don't want to re-experience dangerous situations. This is one side of the emotional spectrum, so it's not only negative, but there can be also positive experience, of course. And uh, this is also part of emotional learning. Um, so relevancy has those both sides included into the concept, so relevancy might be the better way of thinking about it. In my mind, handwriting is the best way to process info than other as a method, uh, method. Yes, lazy grizzly. Um, that is a major, or this is the major reason why we decided why we decided to make it uh, make an image capture um, like we have it in the archive, because it's a way to integrate your handwriting and uh, especially your drawing capability uh, and your archive. So many times, I hope I have the yeah I have it. 
Um, oh, wait a minute. I need to archive this. So you see archetypes. I basically draw uh, such pictures and make models. So visual models, not only like written out models. And then I explain the models or work with them. So um, some thoughts for for example, this would be, I don't need to have handwriting on that because this would be trivial, especially because it's more of a, a memory thing for me than to come up with it. But if I really think about it, I quite often um, catch myself, make drawings, and then write about the drawings and let this, um, and then let the, uh, the drawing or the act of the drawing and thinking about the drawing and redrawing it, like make it like a uh, what is it called? Uh, make it a make it a hermeneutic hermeneutic, hem, hermeneutic uh, circle, uh, but you. Oh no, you don't see the word, so I um, make it like this. Um, make it a hermeneutic, hermeneutic circle. So. so I'm still going back and forth because I can't get my throat full, how we say it in German. Ich kriege den Hals nicht voll. Uh, no. Ja, um, uh, uh, Lazy Grizzly wrote, uh, wrote uh, Whenever I go to digital processing, my thinking becomes narrow. And I think it's um, it's it's an accurate description because uh, the digital world somehow um, shifts your mind towards your left hemisphere. I don't know, okay, I've, I don't know how it works good enough to explain it in English. In German, I would be uh, able, but um, the left hemisphere is more mechanistic and it, it's more narrow, um, uh, narrow in its nature of thinking. So, uh, for example, the left hemisphere is not able to to even uh, to even think about the possibility that it is wrong, and um, it is it's quite it's it's the same quite similar to uh, to drinking coffee while working. It narrows your focus down and narrows your thinking down. Uh, it can be mitigated, or the coffee thing can be mitigated, but I'm totally. Uh, on you because that is the reason I think practicing practicing the Cetric Custom method is big part of its productivity because um, if you practice the Cetric Custom method so what I did here was exceptionally slow for me because it is all in English and I need to talk about it and I'm, and I'm of course conscious about that I'm recorded and uh, that you see what I'm doing and I'm self-conscious uh, um, because I think, oh no, my English is so bad, and uh, or people uh, will point the finger to me and laugh about me, and Christian will tell me afterwards how bad my English is, and oh, and so it, it, it's going a lot. No, I'm not that insecure, but you get my point. Um, uh, so when you are practice or and well versed with the Zettel Custom method and the tool, you basically just think, and your fingers move. Automatically, and then you can. Uh, oh, viewers will experience buffering. Um, I think. Uh, um, uh, yeah, then then you can bypass this problem. So it's it you can work digital, but it's more like a it's a byproduct um, of your thinking, um, and not the thinking in itself. No, it's wrong. I, I think I need to think about it more, how to really uh, explain it. But basically, uh, my, my statement is the more you are 
practice with your tools, the wider your, or you can rewiden your thinking when it comes to the digital world. As at least this is what I experienced. Yeah, uh, Lazy Grizzly uh, wrote Neurola. Uh, Christian, uh, Christian asked uh, Neuro in what respect, uh, and Re Lazy Grizzly answered. Neuro like I focus more on the form or structure rather than the processing info. Yes, it's basically the left hemisphere. The left hemisphere uh, concerns itself with uh, with mechanical form, with preformed um, with preformed schemes, and the right hemisphere is basically just presenting the world as it is. And in its in the very nature of the hemispheres, the right uh, the right hemisphere is has a wider type of attention. So it's it's perfectly it's a perfect concept or application of the concept neuronus. It's strange. I figure that using an iPad equal notebook, but there's something about pen and paper that beats tablets. Yes, even though you can draw, write, doodle, it's it's called. I think it's uh, no. I know it's called uh, depth of pro processing, but I think only um, the reason why uh, a pen and paper is way superior to iPads um, is because you have more depth of processing. So when you, when you are calculating and doing basic calculus, you are using the part of your brain that was responsible to make the first learning experiences of numbers. So if you learn numbers with your fingers, and with rhymes and with music, then the areas of the brain, if you just uh, calculate some uh, some numbers, will activate that are responsible for uh, your fingers, your uh, or and music and language. So you can use more parts of your brain. So you have like a, uh, like more processors at the same time working on the problem. And if you learn on the iPad. For example, as a child, the numbers or other, like like this uh, 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 idiotic modern methods, then you will reduce the amount of brain tissue involved with um, with calculating, and you will have like a ceiling. So you just know the numbers, but you won't be able to understand uh, mathematics as deeply because you can't um, you can't uh, boot, so to say, or use. Uh, certain areas of the brain while others can and it's necessary and the same happens in the spontaneous act of uh, writing so the act that I feel uh, feel my pen and feel the paper and it's different and I'm uh, I'm seeing the, the paper as part of the world and don't uh, and don't, uh, and I'm not forced um, to pretend that the whole world just is the the tablet um, just increases uh, the brain tissue involved with this experience and then uh, uh, yeah you will be better and it's of course it's more enjoyable because uh, let's face it screens suck no you are not wasting anyone's time uh, lazy grizzly Um, writing means making sequential on the sketches. Yes, writing a sequential drawing is uh, not sequential, more holistic. In the first year, I knew I didn't have a laptop. Oh. This will be a great, a great advantage. Uh, when I was uh, uh, when I was in in uh, high school and made the, my high school is it a high school diploma abitur? Um, I didn't have a calculator and I made everything in my head and on paper, of course. And it was to my great benefit. I developed some skills to get on Christian's nerves. 
After that, it took me some time to explain it. Yes, thank you. Yo, yo, welcome, Dino. Josh, I can't wait for Sasha's book. I might have to learn German. Uh, yes. Uh, you don't need to wait uh, learn German. There will be an English translation. Um, but I can't but I can't say publicly how I will make the translation happen because uh, because healthy gamer GG has good talks on video game addiction they're very good at getting people into flow states uh, I will I will say yes and no but I have to ditch this topic I talked about yesterday very extensively and flow is very it could be flow but mm, yeah in German we have a word for that Zerstreuung uh, it's directly trend it's directly translated something to fragmentation so it can be you can go into flow but also you can just fragment your mind and one is healthy and one is not and fragmentation is not uh, no Christian answered a red, a red part of the Make It Stick book. Yeah, or Bruno Hanai, uh, a red part, uh, a red part of the Make It Stick book. It would be nice to see how you would process this book. I think I need to uh, stick to texts that are online, uh, available online, uh, so you can see the text uh, for yourself. Uh, because if I have a book, I don't have two cameras and I'm, I don't have the setup to, to do it. And I don't know if it's legal to... Uh, no, it would be legal. But yeah, I don't... I, I will process some online text. Uh, Implicated video. Yeah, this could be one, but I, but I won't process the whole book. But you can see Christian processing. We have... Uh, with this book, of course, we are we work differently a bit, and I'm, I'm more practiced in processing uh, uh, texts and not uh, using my cell custom for programming purposes. But um, no, but it's just full stop. So cool, Josh. That's cool. I like the tight iteration loops. I get stuck reading too much, diving down the big bunny hole. Not increasing knowledge now will stop after twenty minutes. Yeah, it's it could be a good workaround if uh, if you catch yourself to read to read too much, um, and that is why I basically do my thinking in writing, so I don't have to worry um, about this issue. Uh, ah, <laughs> yes. Okay, it sounds good, colleagues, man, blah, blah, Christian wrote something. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Al komplett schwarz schon? Nein, bisschen sieht man, oder? Das war's, ich sehe noch ein bisschen mehr. Naja. Um, so, I read some more blog comparing the online with the game, if we, okay. Yeah, well, it's getting dark. But the problem is, if I use the lamp next to my uh, to my desk you will get like a uh, like a strange strange effect so it's basically it's nine o'clock in the evening so 9 p.m uh, in my time zone I'm up since uh, 5 5:45 a.m with no cognitive rest so my batteries are no low and I will need to finish so party people um, <laughs> when things go black what will happen you will meet God or the devil depending on how 